Alrighty, friends, neighbors, Bob Ross here. And today, we're gonna go to the scenic views of Colorado. We're gonna paint some trees. We're gonna learn about life. So why don't you join me? Alrighty, well, let's get down to it. First thing we gotta do, grab a little hand sanitizer. Sanitize our hands, it's the most important thing right now. A clean hand is also a clean canvas. Blank canvas, as I like to say. So today, we're going to start out with a simple tree. Now what you do want is, you know, different patterns along the way. That's perfect. Alrighty. So now what we have to do is the cross pattern of the sky. Go ahead, take your brush. This paint needs a little more water, so we're gonna go ahead and go with the dark gray. It's a little cloudy outside. Our happiness is not. Alrighty. Take this gray and just swoosh pattern. Oh, just like that. X, 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 X. Beautiful. I like to put my joy into this painting because the joy will then come out of the painting. Alrighty, well, as you can see here, my friend the tree needs a friend. Everybody needs a friend. Let's go ahead and let's paint this tree a friend. Will you join me? You see, again, the dabbing technique is the most important. You know, as modern Bob Ross, dabbing is important. Got you there. Alrighty, we're almost done. This painting just needs one final thing. A touch of happiness. Because every painting that's happy makes me happy. Alrighty. Uh, let's do this. Perfect. You see, today we were able to make a masterpiece. And I hope you're able to make a masterpiece too. You see, we're all art and we're all joy. Have a lovely day, friends. I hope you enjoyed this from your living room. So have you guys ever been to Morgan's Canoe? All right, a couple of you guys have. And so Morgan's Canoe, it's a place not too far from here on the Little Miami River. And it's a place you could, you know, go to canoe, kayak, do your thing on, on the river. It's a great time. And so me and my coworkers uh, had a fun day. And so we went to Morgan's Canoe. A and I was pumped because my parents had had kayaks. And so I was really excited to get to go kayak down this river. And it was a warm, sunny day. It was going to be great. And so our whole group got down there and we started down the river. And our leader, his name's Tim. Uh, Tim was guiding us, and we get to this certain point uh, where there's this tree overhanging on the river. And Tim is like, yo, let's jump off there. And I, I'm looking at this tree and thinking, no way. I mean, this tree does not look that big. It does not look like it could support anybody's weight. And I'm thinking, the water is not that deep. I stuck my paddle down. And no, it wasn't that deep. And so I, you're crazy. No way, Tim. And he says, no, no, no. I've done this before. You got this. Okay. I'm a little confused at this point because nothing adds up. The tree, you know, the, the, the depth of the water, nothing makes sense. But unfortunately, I fell under peer pressure and decide uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to do this thing. Uh, and so I get off my canoe, my, my buddy in my canoe is holding, holding it down, and I start climbing up this tree. Mind you, my feet are wet, and so uh, it's a little slippery, and I am shaking because I'm still not sure about this tree. And I climb up and up and up and up and up and up until I get to basically the very top. And I look down, and I'm thinking, there's no way. 
I mean, there's no way. This is several, several feet off the ground. There's no way this is going to work. On the bottom, I can look at Tim and see him saying, do it, do it. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do this or not. Now, the tree did hold me, so I'm thinking, okay, you know, maybe he has, you know, he's done this before. That makes sense. Okay, I'm, uh, you know, what, what's the worst thing that can happen? And so, Tim, you know, at this point, you've got this. The whole group does that thing. When you go up to a high height and you need to like do like conquer the fear, they count down. And at the end of that countdown, if you don't do it, uh, it's probably the worst thing that can ever happen. It's super embarrassing. And so they start with their countdown. One, two, three. And I jump. And I jump and I land in the water. And I do touch the bottom, but I don't get hurt whatsoever. It was super refreshing. It was super cool to get to do that. To jump from that high of a tree into the river. I mean, it was awesome. And I got, came back out and they were like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of other people got out of their canoes because they were like, yeah, I'm doing this too. Like the, if Cody's doing it, I'm, I'm going in as well. And so I actually did it a couple more times and it was a, an awesome experience. But here's the deal with that story is, you know, why is it so difficult for us to trust people? And why is it so difficult for us to trust when the direction is clear? You see, for that story, Tim was giving me the exact encouragement I needed. He was giving me and supporting me in a way that it made sense. It was like, oh, you've done it before. You know, the, you know he, it's fine. He's gone up on the, the tree. Everything's going to be good. And yet I still doubted. I still had this moment of like, no way, dude. But I eventually had to trust my leader. You see, I think that... The same way that I experienced me jumping off that tree and, and I experienced with Tim and the group is the same way I kind of experienced with God. There are times that I'm doing things and I, I just ask God, what's going on here? And especially right now, you know, I think to, you know, God, why, why am I stuck at my house and, and caused to be lonely? Um, God, why are all these people dying from the sickness and not getting healed? Like, God, where are you in, the, in these moments? And trust becomes a factor and it becomes an issue. You know, I, I know that it has to be difficult right now in these circumstances for each and every one of you. I mean, we're getting sports taken away. Our senior years are getting taken away. Different activities that we've been able to do. Our friends getting to hang out together. All that's gone. And a lot of times it chalks up to this sadness or, you know, this unhappiness with the current space. And God, I, I just want life to be normal. And so for you guys, I, I know that, that trusting is difficult. And so I want to experience a story today that's kind of going to change our opinion on this trust and, and to see if we can also trust in God. So let's do this. So last week was an important holiday for Christians, and that was Easter. And so Easter is this time where we celebrate just the resurrection of Jesus. You know, he died for you and for me, and, and he defeated death, and it completely changed the world. I mean, sin was no more, and, and the grave was defeated. I mean, all of these things, Jesus gave us the power of eternal life, and all we had to do was say yes to it. And all we have to do is say yes to it. So in the following days, I mean, you can see here the disciples witness some amazing miracles. The disciples, along with some, some woman, a, man, a lady named Mary, actually got to witness this amazing thing of the tomb being empty. And they actually got to witness Jesus in the flesh down to them. And so the disciples get to see this amazing miracle happen. And so... So what we're going to do is we need to turn to the story of, uh, of Thomas. And so if you can, turn with me to John 20, John 20, 24. That's where we're going to be today. Go ahead, turn there. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and do that. So up until this point in the Bible, we actually know very little about Thomas. In reading and looking at some other things, in the book of John, Thomas is only mentioned two other times. And in the entire New Testament, uh, we can only see Thomas present in several stories, uh, but his, his, his quotes, his, his involvement with the stories is very little. And so this is really the first big story of Thomas. And Thomas, 
His name actually means twin, and so Thomas was one of the disciples that followed Jesus around, Jesus around and was listening to his teachings and was, again, going to start the church. And so what we need to do, we need to pick up in the story of Thomas, and so let's pick up together in John 20. John 20, go ahead and turn there, 20, 24. So again, the, the disciples had seen Jesus before. At this point, they're talking to Thomas. So in 24, it says, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into the side, I will not believe. I will not believe. You see, Thomas was one of Jesus' closest followers and was a part of that group. Now, he wasn't able to witness the first time that Jesus came to them. So when they tell him this, you would think that Thomas would believe them. He had seen countless miracles, had seen tons of other things. Uh, and in this story, Thomas decided not to jump. Like I didn't, you know, I jumped off the tree. Thomas decided not to jump. And so he had this doubt that was filled within him. And so he decided not to trust. And I just think that's weird. But let's continue on. Let's, let's see some other things that happened. So uh, pick up back in 2026. 20, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. You see, this, this story doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. One of Jesus' closest friends had this big moment of doubting. After hearing all the stories of Jesus saying, I'm going... The Lord's going to come back and be, be made new, and this resurrection's going to happen. And knowing that that was going to take place, Thomas still was filled with doubt. And there was this moment of questioning. And take note, you see, Jesus, he takes eight days to respond to Thomas's doubt. Jesus comes back eight days after Thomas initially has this moment of, uh, of questioning. And yet, Jesus picks right back up where the conversation left off. Thomas said, unless I see the holes where the nails were caused in his hand, Jesus picks right back up there. says, peace be with you. Touch my hands. Touch where, where the spear was stabbed into my side. And I got to ask, what do you think Thomas was feeling in this moment? I mean, seriously, do you think he actually reached out and touched Jesus' side? Do you think he actually reached out and touched his hand? And he touched the marks on his body? And I can only imagine the wealth of emotions that were going over Thomas in this. I mean, he had to have just been overwhelmed completely. You see, Jesus, he, or Thomas, he fully, you know, reached into this grasp. Like, he, it, the emotions finally hit him, and he's like, this is Jesus. Like, my Lord, my God. And I'm sure that that, that that doubt turned to faith and those faith probably turned into tears and those tears turned into a fire that couldn't be stopped. So have you ever felt like Thomas? You see, I, I know I have. And there's been plenty of times in my life where I, I've just wanted to say, God, where are you? God, show me something. God, why haven't, you know, why, why haven't you responded to me right now. God, I feel like I'm completely lost and you're nowhere to be found. I'm telling you that those questions in my life, when I've asked God that, have turned into answers. And those answers have turned into faith and that faith has helped change my life forever. You see, I chose to trust the voice that God was telling me. I chose to trust that. You see, God doesn't want you to struggle. He doesn't want to walk around uh, with, with your pain. He doesn't want you, or he, he doesn't want you to feel that pain. He doesn't want you to know, or he doesn't want you to think that he's not listening to you. He is, gosh darn it, he is. 
He's listening to you. He's listening to you every single moment. He's with you and walking through every decision that you make, and he's right there along your side in your anger and your pain and your sorrow. You, we ask, and he may not deliver right then and there, but you know, see, for even Thomas, he waited eight days. And I'm telling you, Jesus is going to respond to us. And I promise that answer is coming as long as we trust. You see, trust, it takes so much. It takes every fiber in your being committed to that. Committed to that thing. It takes so much to trust God. It takes so much to say each and every day, God, what do you have for me? You see, the thing about Thomas, he was with Jesus for days and days on end in his ministry. He was with Jesus throughout his life. He got to see miracle after miracle after miracle. And yet even Thomas doubted. You see, even Thomas wasn't sure that the death of Jesus defeated, uh, like, like it was over. That that, that wasn't going to, stay, like the death wasn't it. He didn't even believe what was going on. And you see, there's an interesting part about this in that, you know, God is working through us in a way that our doubt, even through our doubt, there's going to be victory. And all it takes us to do in that gap is to trust. So Thomas, you know, we, we see in the story, Thomas goes on after that part. Uh, he goes on to start the church in India and in Syria and actually like globally goes out and, and spreads the gospel and the good message that Jesus had for him. After believing, he knew, he knew then, man, I'm going to spread this gospel throughout. And I think that, you know, Jesus touches our hearts to say like, even when we don't see we can believe and we should believe. You see, Thomas had doubt and he wasn't sure about everything going on. You know, yet Jesus still responded to him and called upon him to spread the gospel, to make an impact literally globally. And he can do the same thing for you. You see, trust creates relationship, which creates impact. You know, for me, when I took a step off of that tree and jumped into the water, uh, it took some trust to believe my leader. And then from there, people started following me and getting up on the tree too, and also jumping in the water. And the impact that it has was just remarkable. And the same way in our lives, when we trust Jesus, people around us see the difference. They see what's going on and it makes an impact. So, hey, I want to talk to two groups of people right now. I want to talk to two groups. So the, for the first group, what I want us to do is I want us to, uh, for the first group, specifically to you guys, I want the people who are struggling with their relationship with Jesus right now. They're struggling. Maybe it's even something that's that's new. And maybe maybe you're saying, you know, God's real, but I definitely don't know what's going on. I definitely don't feel him. And I definitely don't know what it's like to be a Christian. And that's okay. If, that, if you're in that first group, I want you to follow along with me. Second group, you don't know who you are, but if you're not in that group, just, just hold on a second. And so the first group, what I want you to do is I simply want you to put your palms up. I want you to put your palms up. And this simply is saying, God, I trust you. Now, it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel a little uncomfortable. And so I, just, I, I challenge you to do it. And so we're going to do this together. And I'm going to say a prayer for you guys. So let me pray real quick. All right, God, we allow you to take over our lives. God, we trust you. God, we don't know where you are or when to feel you or what that's like. But God, give us an answer. God, we thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. And thank you for being a part of ours. It's in your own prayer. Amen. All right, first group. What I want you to do right now is I want you to pray on your own. Pray on your own. You know, palms up. And, and you can mute the TV. When you, you see hands waving, that's when you know to come back in. Second group. This is for you. Is, is What I want to say to you is if you're in a spot where you're in a relationship with Jesus, you're communicating with him, you're reading your Bible, you're in this this groove, but yet there's still things that you don't fully trust in God. You still haven't fully given over some parts of your life. Maybe it's just you don't know the plan for your life. You don't know where you're going. If that's you, what I want us to do, I just want us to pray together. So let's do the same thing. Palms up, a little uncomfortable. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing these people uh, into the stream. God, thank you for allowing them just to have a relationship with you. God, thank you for showing them love and grace and mercy. But God, we ask you to lead them. God, go out before them. Show them the way. Show them where you are and where you want their lives to be. 
God, we thank you for this. It's your name we pray. Amen. So, hey, great job. Oh, wait. Ho, 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 ho. First group. First group. All right. They're back now. So, hey, for both groups of people, great job. I'm so glad. You can use that prayer. You can put your palms up and show that sign of trust throughout the week. So when you pray this week, do that. Go ahead and, and practice that. You know, praying with this whole thing, uh, it's just showing God that you trust him. And as you ask for certain things, as you, as you say certain prayers, you know, it might take eight days like it did for Thomas. As you doubt, it might come and you might have, need some time, but hey, the time is worth it and I'm telling you that Jesus is gonna be there for you. So hey, uh, see you guys soon and have a good week.